Dear friends in Jesus, there is a story of a dying king who did not have anyone to succeed him to his throne. Noticing his sorrow, a friend gave him an advice to choose between the two of his most trusted servants. The king loved this piece of advice that he right away implemented it. He called one of them and asked him, if you succeed me, what kind of king will you be? I will rule by decree and command with severity, was his answer. The king then called the second one and asked him the same question. His reply was, your majesty, I will continue to be a servant because the only difference between a king and a servant is a throne. And he succeeded the king. Dear friends in Jesus, today we celebrate the kingship of Jesus, which is manifested mostly in his service of other people. So much has been said and written about Jesus' kingship, but today I want you to understand it in and through the mind of an author. He has a book by name, Jesus in My Heart, in which he deals with the kingship of Jesus. In a very interesting way, he explains Jesus' kingship using the four images of kings in a deck of cards. Here is how he explains. The first image is the king of clubs. What is a club? By definition, it is an extension of your violent hand. It symbolizes a hostile person. Such being the case, Jesus cannot be the king of clubs because he shows neither violence nor hostility. Yes, dear friends, Jesus is here, gentle and humble of heart, and his mission is to show love and not enmity, so that we all love each other, live for each other, and be brothers and sisters to each other with God as our loving Father. By this, do people know that you are my disciples, if you love, he says in John's Gospel 13, 35. The second image is the king of spades. What is a spade for? It is for throwing dirt. Jesus cannot be the king of spades because he is here not to make our lives dirty, but rather to cleanse us from everything that defiles us. Speaking of Jesus' cleansing nature, the Bible says, he is like a refiner's fire on a fuller soap. Malachi chapter 3 verse 2. A spade is also a symbol of hopelessness because of its association with grave. And this is another reason why Jesus cannot be the king of spades, because he rose from death, giving us all hope. And he says, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. John's Gospel Chapter 11, verse 25. The third image is the king of diamonds. Jesus cannot be the king of diamonds because he came to bless our poverty, our crosses, our pains, and our trials. Yes, dear friends, Jesus came not to remove our crosses, but to help us carry them in accordance with the will of God. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, he says in Matthew 16, 24. The last image is the king of hearts, and this is who Jesus is, king of hearts. Jesus is the king of hearts because that is where he wants to live, and that is what he wants to transform our heart. He wants to transform it in such a way that it becomes a new heart, doing not its own will, but God's. 
Jesus' kingdom in us will be complete when God's will becomes our will. It is complete when, together with Jesus, all of us can say, I am here not to do my will, but the will of the one who sent me. John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 38. There is just one thing Jesus, our King, is asking us today, our heart. In Proverbs 23, 26, he says, My son, my daughter, give me your heart. And what does Jesus do with our hearts? He wants to resuscitate them. On February 24th, 2001, a one-year Canadian girl by name Erica came out of her house, lost her way, and spent the entire night in the Edmonton winter. When her mom found her the following morning, she appeared totally frozen with no signs of life whatsoever. But doctors could resuscitate her, and to the amazement of all, she did not suffer any damage anywhere. Dear friends in Jesus, our hearts may have grown cold over time, and today Jesus wants to resuscitate them before they suffer severe damages. Mark Twain's wife, Olivia, was a very good Christian, but over time she lost her faith, influenced by her husband. One day, when she was very sad due to her daughter's death, Mark Twain told her, Olivia, if you think your faith can give you comfort, you can lean on it. No, I cannot, she replied. I do not have any of it left. Dear friends in Jesus, before we lose our faith, we have to give our hearts to Jesus so that he can resuscitate them and fill us with his love and faith. And how does Jesus resuscitate our hearts? He does so by helping them recognize the priceless value of faith. I read about a jewelry store here in the U.S. which found it very difficult to sell some items on their inventory. And so what they did was to double the prices of those items. Interestingly, those items sold like crazy once the prices went up because High prices changed the way customers thought about those items. Yes, dear friends, our thoughts determine our actions. And this is what Jesus wants to change in our hearts today. The way we look at faith so that we hold it in highest esteem. And our prayer today is, Lord Jesus, take our hearts and work on them until your will becomes our will. Amen.